Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. It's getting dark early. Yesterday, I picked up some Volan replicas for Lucille. Four of them, all cleaned up, ready to have tires mounted. And today, it's getting dark early, so here I am. 554. Pulled the seat out of Queen B because that floor still seems a little damp. So I pulled the seat out of it and I put that heater. I don't know if you guys remember, I bought this space heater. Has a thermostat on it. Doesn't have a fan, but it has some kind of radiation type system. I put that in there where the seat goes to hopefully finish drying out the inside of this car because it's still just a little damp. It's taking a little while to heat up. I got it on low, I might switch it to high. I'm going to come out here and check it in about a half hour. If it's not up, I got it set at 68 right now. If it's not up to 68 in a half hour, I'm going to put it on high. So to hopefully dry this car out. I also set the timer on it for eight hours. That's my new glasses. What do you guys think? It's still just a little too cold to do much outside. So I don't have anything going on outside. However... I could do some inside work, so I'm going to work on these cylinder heads a couple of hours. I don't know if you guys remember. Yeah, I still hadn't cleaned this garage out. I bought this bench grinder from Harbor Freight. Now, I purchased one about two, maybe three years ago that didn't work well with grinding the uh, carbon off the valves. So, if somebody wants that, they can have it. Pay for shipping, I'll ship it to you. But I'm going to go ahead and set this one up on my work table back here and get the cleaning off some of these valves so I can put these heads together. I really don't remember how long ago I bought this, but man, I hope it works because I've had it probably longer than my warranty. Anyway, let me go ahead and crack this thing open. 10, 7, 21. Now, I hadn't been three months. Crack this open, set it up. I'm actually going to bolt it to my little work table over there. So that it won't be moving around while I'm grinding stuff. You know, stuff, motor-driven stuff, it vibrates and moves around. And I'm just going to drill a couple holes in there, bolt it to it, and grind these valves away. So let's crack this open and see how it's going to work. In this video, I'm going to be opening this bare, ultra-bright LED light that comes on this, I call it a bench grinder. 8-inch bench grinder with... LEDs, the 4.8 amp, three fourths something, three fourths horsepower. And we'll see how this thing works. I'm going to primarily use it to clean up hardware and grind away carbon off of valves from cylinder heads that I'm rebuilding. I rebuilt Volvo cylinder heads. Open the box that had that stuff there, packed on top of this styrofoam. In the styrofoam, there's a bench grinder with look like a dry pack. So let me pull that out of there, set it on the workbench. As listed on the box, this thing weighs 15.5 kilograms, 17 kilograms, packed. So it's about 34 pounds, not too light. So get a good grip on it. Let me go ahead and take everything out of the plastic. It's trying to pull that stuff out of the plastic. Gosh dang thing bit me has strong staples in there so get you some scissors cut that stuff out I just start pulling on the plastic and a staple went through my finger mm, not for children so one package had this hardware in it one package had these brackets in it another package had these brackets in there one package had that face shield in there and another one had a face shield or spark shield wherever you want to call it let me grab that light. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. The light is connected to it already. LED, supposedly. And then you have your power cord back there. 
Now I don't see any bolts to bolt it down through my table so I'll have to get those myself. But let me go ahead and breeze through the instructions and show you how to install these shields and I'm going to take one of these sand and grinding wheels off and put a brush wheel on that I purchased from Home Depot. I actually purchased one from Harbor Freight but I can't locate it so picked up one while I was in Home Depot. That's my serial number for my part there and I guess that's my model number so I need to submit for my warranty information. Woo woo! Zero there, that would be off, that would be on. I'm going to go ahead and save this but this is a warning that the improper use of this piece of machinery could result in serious bodily injury, possibly death. So do yourself a favor, don't kill yourself. As I mentioned, the first thing I'm going to do is replace this grinding wheel. The instructions say make sure that the grinding wheel or whatever wheel you install is rated for at least 3600 RPMs and it's got an arbor of 5 8 inches. And the one that I picked up is of course 8 inches. That's the maximum size for this grinder. It has a 5 8 arbor. It's a half inch wide it could be no wider than one inch and then the speed rating on it is 4500 rpms you can see that there so this is an acceptable wheel for this it has a directional turn on there so you could see if your wheel you're installing will have on there and uh, let's go ahead and get this side cover off so we can get this installed First thing I'm going to do is get a Phillips screwdriver and unscrew all three of these Phillips screws so I can pull this away. Now if you got that other stuff mounted and installed, you need to remove all that. Since we haven't installed that, I don't have to remove all that other stuff. First thing you want to do is make sure the unit is turned off and it is unplugged from the power source. After it's unplugged from the power source, you remove those three screws. After all three screws are removed, you want to hold this on when you remove the last one because this can fall off. Go ahead and lift this away from your bench grinder. Next thing you want to do is put a wrench on that and unturn it while you hold this steady uh, counterclockwise. That's 24 millimeters and I was able to hold the stone steady and break that loose. It does not have a torque value in the instructions. so. Just make sure it's tight. Unscrew the nut. And next we're going to try to wiggle this off of here. Holding that disc washer. So that's what I'm taking off. And let me open up my package on that and get that installed. You could decide which one you want to take off or which side you want your wheel on or whatever. This is 36 grit. The one I'm leaving on there is 60 grit, rated for steel and stainless steel. Couple things on my wire wheel I'm installing. Number one, it had these vinyl sleeves on it or plastic sleeves. Those did not fit over my post, so I had to remove those. Another thing is, my mounting of my wire wheel is a half inch thick not a full inch so I'm gonna get some washers to make up that half inch thick I have some let me go grab them real quick these are these washers I'm gonna use to make up the difference they look a little big for the bore but I'm gonna try to center them some kind of way I should be all right let me get these in place and get this thing tightened up put a couple washers on the inside I put double-sided tape to hold them in place couple washers on this side. Now I'm going to put this cover guard back on and finish the rest of the assembly process. Read your instructions and especially the safety notices and warnings. These are called work rest support brackets. When you put those on, you want to put those on with a washer, lock washer, and nut. This one here is for the right side, this little gear thing point toward the inside and that one there is for the left one with the gear thing there so 
put those in, tighten them down. They look like half inch or 13 millimeters. I'll confirm that here in a second. But you want to put the nut down, the lock washer on, then the flat washer on, and screw those in there. Start those screws in by finger. Don't tighten them down because you want to make sure these are positioned where you need them. Next, you want to install this rest support. It'll go in here like this. That little teeth area will mate with that and you position it where you want it. Now they got this one on the left side here on that finer grinding wheel and you use these wing nuts. You got a washer on there and a lock washer on there and screw it in there. Snug it down in the position you need it to be in. Once you have these snug down the angle you want it, now you want to position them in as close or far away from the stone or wire wheel that you want. You don't want too much gap there because you don't want nothing falling down in there getting jammed. So put that where you need it. Now you want to tighten these down so that that is held in the position properly. Do that on both sides. The instructions say you want no more than 1 16th of an inch of space in there. So you want that thing very close like I have it on both sides. Next you want to install the spark guards making sure they're about a sixteenth of an inch or so from your wheels as well and they use those little screws there so these screws with the washers and lock washers on you bring this up here you set it up here like that put those two screws in it and push them right before they touch your grinder and snug them down so this part is going to rest against right here and that'll be your spark guards installed. I used a 5 16 socket or 8 millimeter to tighten those down. Or you could use a Phillips screwdriver. Just snug this stuff down. If you tighten it too tight, you're going to strip out the metal threads and the casing. Just snug them down so that they're tight. Don't over tighten them. You'll destroy it. Last but not least, you're going to install your eye shield. You take this nut here. You can see it's got that square peg on it. You stick that through there and twist it so the square peg is straight. Then you take your shield, set it over that screw. Then you put the washer on, the lock washer on, and screw this on by hand. And adjust it to where you need it, and you'll be good to go. Tighten it down, hand tight. Don't over tighten it and mess up any threads or anything. So there you have it. Bolt, eye, spark guard washer lock washer wing nut now that you have it totally assembled it is ready to use spin this make sure nothing's grinding on your wheel or your wire wheel your guards are clear your lights up here your switch is off you're ready to plug this in now this thing is heavy and it's got some it feels like rubber feet on it so it won't slide around but i highly recommend that you mount it so you can put a pencil or something down in there to mark where you want to mount it to your workbench or to a stand. I've seen these mounted to stands, but I recommend you get it mounted, not let it just sit and float around on your bench. Because while this thing is sitting there and it's running and you're using it, you may be paying more attention to what you're doing than if this thing is moving and walking off of a workbench or table. Also, remember to use gloves. If you're grinding screws and stuff, use vice grips or pliers to hold that stuff and use eye protection. You don't want sparks or anything like that flying off of here, uh, getting into your skin or into your eye, and especially these wire wheels. I've seen these brushes off the wire wheel actually come out and stick into fabric on my clothes and your gloves and stuff like that. So use a good pair of leather gloves and definitely wear eye protection. So we're going to plug this thing in, see if it works, and see if this light works. I don't see a switch for the light, so it may come on every time you turn the switch on. I have it plugged in. There is no speed control. It's on or off. So I'm going to put my hand on this, hold it down a little bit, and flip the switch on. And there it is. It is working. And it is vibrating. You can see things moving across the table. 
so don't let nothing get sucked into it and cut or grind anything you want this is not blowing a lot of air but this a wire wheel is blowing a lot of air so just know that and the light came on as soon as I flipped the switch on so you can aim your light on your work area there looks like some of my bristles from my wire wheel touched and scraped if you feel that this information was useful please like it and share it with your social media friends you can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post you can follow me on Twitter and if you need to contact me directly please visit my website and if you have any questions leave them below and someone or myself will reply to them again thank you very much for watching